this is Gaming Through the Ages, and today we're looking at the Dark Hunter series for the PlayStation 1. Dark Hunter was a two-game subseries of a project to release games as English learning aids in Japan by the company Koei, known as the English Dream series. Dark Hunter was the second series after the previous three-game series known as the Emit games. The Dark Hunter series is virtually unrelated to those games, however, consisting of the games Dark Hunter Jo Ijigen, or Otherworld Academy, and Geyoma no Mori, or Demon Forest. It's important to note that although these were released as two separate games, they are two halves of a whole. The games should really have been released as one two-disc game, because they are effectively a single game split in half. The first game stops with a sudden to be continued screen, and the second game picks up immediately after. The footage in this review will be from Otherworld Academy, as to not spoil too much of the plot, but I played through the entirety of both games for this review, and the footage is effectively what the player gets with both games. Up and join a club too. Since these games were designed as English learning aids, they feature complete English and Japanese voiceovers, as well as complete English and Japanese subtitles. The player can go through the entire roads. experience with minimal Japanese, and the game is mostly it's akin to watching a cheesy 90s city. anime, so especially considering the English voiceover is abysmal to compared to the forest. Japanese voiceover. Ivy? <laughs> what? Does it look that being like said, if you something? enjoy over-the-top cheesy voice acting from the yeah, 90s as much as I does. do, you will most likely have a it's great time listening to the corny alive. dialogue delivered with lots of awkward pauses and stiff Actually, animations. If you're looking for humor, go for the English Don't dub, but if you want to enjoy the story more seriously, then the Japanese dub with English subtitles is what you're looking for. The game is fairly useful if you're looking to improve your Japanese reading and listening comprehension, since the learning aid design works the other way around for the most part. It's fairly noticeable that the game has to load between each piece of dialogue, since it's loading two audio tracks, two language tracks, and animation. But during these load times, the player can hit the cross button to bring up a menu. In this menu, the player has the options to play the scene again, bring up Japanese or English subtitles, change the audio between Japanese and English, or enter a second menu. The English subtitles also feature Japanese definitions of highlighted words. In addition, there's a bar at the bottom of the screen indicating the player can scrub through previous footage by either using the bar or utilizing the L1 and R1 buttons. In the secondary menu, the options from top to bottom are Start Game from Beginning, Continue from Save, Save Game, Environment Settings, and End Game. The environment settings allow the player to adjust the voiceover, background music, and font. Hitting cross again in the main menu will allow the game to continue on with whatever options the player has selected. There's also a letter here indicating which character viewpoint is currently being watched. Once the player reaches a certain point early on in the story, they can choose between three different characters and then switch between their viewpoints in this menu. Once a character section is concluded, the game has you select another character to continue where the story left off. So I found it simplest to largely ignore this option, after I had played with it for a bit and let the game direct me back to the viewpoints where I had stopped playing around to finish out those characters. There are some interactive sections sprinkled throughout the game, which I suppose are to keep true to the multimedia claim Koei slapped on it. Occasionally, the player will have to make a dialogue choice and can choose to read the options in either Japanese or English. As far as I can tell, there's no real bearing on the story regardless of what the player chooses other than hearing a different audio file. There are also sections where the player will have to answer quizzes, but these were designed with English learning in mind, so anyone watching this video should have no issues. This includes things like giving the names for common objects in English, and unfortunately these quizzes cannot be switched to Japanese naming, so they're really nothing but boring exercises for English players. Sprinkled throughout the game are point and click adventure sections, but they consist of merely clicking on objects on the environment until the story continues. The player occasionally has to click on the same objects multiple times to move the story forward, but there's nothing outside of clicking and listening to audio during these sections, so they are fairly straightforward. The last gameplay segment players will run across is the game's major negative aspect. Essentially, there are occasional enemy encounters during the story where the game becomes a first-person light gun style experience, where the player must use the d-pad to drag a cursor over highlighted enemy segments and hit the circle button before the enemy attacks the player. 
Unfortunately, between the window of time being so short and the cursor being controlled by the D-pad, this is an exercise in frustration and often takes several tries. You can actually hold down the circle button while dragging the cursor over the incoming attacks, which helps a little bit, but this is still far and away the worst part of Dark Hunter. If the player gets a game over during these scenes, and more likely when they get a game over, they are presented with three options in Japanese, those being try again, save game, and end game, so just make sure not to select the bottom option. The highlight of Dark Hunter is the story. It. It's a mashup of 90s demon anime tropes with something like the horror film The Faculty. It's silly and it's over the top, but the game does manage some eerie environments and music at several points, and for fans of cheesy horror that's more ludicrous Nothing than creepy, here, huh? it does deliver. All in all, this is a strange import for the PS1, but is playable regardless of Japanese comprehension level, and it's just weird enough that I think there's a good amount of PS1 aficionados who would get a major kick out of the game that and all its janky was. 90s bizarreness. With that human body model and all.